so for today's video we are going to be doing something that I don't normally do. We are talking about powders. Now you guys know I am a lover of all things cream. I love cream products and I think that's what looks the best on my skin. I am also super, super picky with cream products, but I'm also even more picky when it comes to powder products because I do find that with my dry skin, some powders just leave a lot to be desired. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through my favorite powder products that I actually go back to, that I use consistently, and that I absolutely, absolutely love. I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys saying, you know, we're wearing masks way more often, and powder products tend to hold up a little bit better under a mask. So I hope that this video ends up being super helpful for you guys. If you do enjoy it, if you do find it helpful, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you like me, I would also love for you to come back, so make sure to subscribe. Let's first start off with a blush that I am wearing today and that I love, love, love so much. This powder formula really, really blew me away when I first tried it out. It is the Buxom Wanderlust Primer Infused Blushes. I have the shade Dolly. Dolly is the shade that I am wearing on my cheeks today. In the pan, you can see it looks more like a plum, but on the cheeks, it's this really soft, like neutral pinky peach. It's swatched up here for you guys. Do you see how there's that like touch of peach, but it is way more of just like a really flattering sort of rose pink. Absolutely stunning, stunning shade. But the reason why I really adore this powder blush is the formula and the way that it ends up looking on my skin. The pan and the blush itself is actually quite stiff and densely packed, making this a pretty pigmented blush. But I think what makes this formula really beautiful is the actual texture and the way it kind of transforms on the cheeks. It really looks boring in the pan. Even on the finger, it looks boring. But when you go and blend it out onto the cheeks, this sort of shift comes out and a really beautiful sheen that is absolutely not a glitter. It's just sort of like a touch of pearl suspended throughout the pigment. This is certainly not a blush highlight hybrid. I think some of the other shades might have a little bit more glow to them, but this shade is just such a beautiful, beautiful satin finish that just makes the cheeks and the skin look healthy. At the end of the day, that's what I look for in a blush. I really want the cheeks to pop and I want my skin to just look good and this powder really mimics that healthy look it really gives the cheek such a soft lit from within glow it just looks like you take care of your skin and your skin is doing well so that's really all I could ever ask for for a powder blush formula this is certainly a buildable blush so if you really want a lot of pigment you can definitely get it but if you want to sheer it out just go in with a light touch and you'll be able to also get that sheer look. It also really, really lasts on my skin. This is definitely a long wear blush for me. There's really a lot to love about the primer infused blushes from Buxom. I've recommended them in the past and even though I do reach for my cream product drawer most of the time, this is certainly a powder blush formula that I will often revisit and would definitely repurchase. Next up, let's kind of talk about a weird sort of hybrid powder cream formula. Honestly, I don't think that these shadows want to be put into a box, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just call them a powder. Even though I do feel like they're also a cream, I don't know. It's my channel, so it's my rules. Richwell Defeat Ashen Ember Eye Soots are such a beautiful, beautiful, unique formula. So they're actually a pigment mixed in with an oil to give them a really sooty texture. You can completely apply them to the lids as you would a normal powder shadow. But because of that oil that they've mixed throughout the pigment, it gives you a true creamy look on the lids. And that's one thing that I have consistently had trouble with when thinking about powder shadows. I just find that a lot of them look heavy on my lids and they look dry. The eyes are such an important feature on our faces and to me it's really off-putting when the eyes are weighed down with a lot of heavy dry looking powder. Now you can see I definitely went for more of a smoky look but up close the quality of my skin still looks good. So the Ritual Defi Ash Number Eye Soots are like a super different 
mysterious product. I get a ton of questions about these. Hopefully I'm gonna answer most of them for you guys. I have three shades. I have the shade Half Light, Golden Age, and Love Spell. These are all three absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous shades. The name Ash and Ember Eye Soots, I do feel is a very fitting name for this formula. They really have that kind of sooty quality to them, which is actually why you can see in the tub that you get them in, it has quite a small hole at the top. And I do think that is to prevent you from just sticking your finger in and applying it on the lids. That would eventually over time disrupt the way that these are pressed and the sort of look that you would get out of them. Here's the best way that I can describe how to apply them to really make the formula shine. What I did today is I took Half Light, which is a really like perfect taupe color, such a beautiful transition color. And because this shade in particular is more of a satin, this is the time where you take a big fluffy brush and just go all over the lids and it will give you such a beautiful, creamy satin look. I will say that this is my most used shade because it's just so easy. Now talking about the two other shades that I have, Golden Age and Love Spell, you could definitely do the same thing with these and just kind of swirl them into the lid and be done. But I really don't think you're going to capture the full potential of these shades. The best way I think to apply them is to take more of a dense brush. What I like to do is kind of go in with a dense kind of domed detail brush and pack that onto the lids to really come to life when you warm them up on the lids and like slowly build them and pack them on. And then you go in and blend them into the rest of the eye look. When you do that, these will give you such a beautifully soft and shimmering look. They really blend out to just look like beautifully creamy pigment. The texture and the way that they look on the lids is just so unique to them. It's really unlike any other sort of powder eyeshadow that I've used. And that is due in part to the fact that this is more of a hybrid product. Am I cheating here? I don't know. If you are someone that really likes your eye looks to look smoldering and very, very blown out, I think you will be a huge fan of these. Again, to demonstrate what I was talking about before, this is more of a short domed brush with a little bit more density. And this one is a little bit longer and just a touch fluffier. So let's go in with Golden Age. So I'm first going to take the fluffy brush, get some pigment on there. You can see that is a very beautiful color. It definitely has that shift and that sheen, but it doesn't look as creamy as it would. Now let's go in with the more densely packed brush. We're just going to swirl and again we're kind of activating the oil and the pigments when we do it like this they're both beautiful but you can see that there's a different sort of richness to the product when you do warm it up in a little bit more of a pointed way with a more dense brush but i would repurchase over and over again i just think they're such a unique beautiful beautiful shadow next let's talk about pretty much the only face powder that I will put on my face to set my makeup, which is the RCMA No Color Powder. I'm honestly a little bit embarrassed to even mention how long I've had this powder because it has been a very, very long time. Because look at how much product you get when you buy it. It's also super affordable. But I absolutely, absolutely recommend this one over and over again because I have just tried so many. I mean, I've tried the powders that most people with dry skin say that they love and they just haven't worked for me. I'm super, super picky because I'd just rather half the time not set my makeup. I need for the powder to set down the makeup, take away a touch of shine, but I need the quality of my skin to still look intact. I need everything to still look very natural. The powder can't be sitting on the skin. The powder can't skip over a really creamy product. This powder just gets it right every single time. It's very finely milled and I never feel like it sits awkwardly or heavily on the skin which is really just number one my biggest priority if you use a very light touch if you go in with just a beauty blender and press it into the skin it becomes really difficult to even see that you're wearing powder which is my goal I would definitely prefer for my skin to not have a really powdery finish but it will still set the makeup and keep everything in place so if you are someone with dry skin if you're someone that just in general does not like powder but you're looking for something to give you a little bit more longevity help stop a little bit of creasing that you might be having in your makeup I definitely definitely recommend this one super straightforward product and it's 
definitely not, you know, the sexiest product, especially when we're talking about like really beautiful smoldering shadows, but it's definitely a product that just can't be replaced in a routine when you find that perfect, really flattering powder formula on the skin. It's hard to use anything else, which is why I literally don't. And next up, let's talk about a very beautiful baked formula from M Cosmetics. This is the Heaven's Glow Faded Clementine Blush. If you are a fan of a more baked formula, I highly, highly recommend these ones from M Cosmetics. This is the shade Faded Clementine. It definitely has that classic sort of dry baked formula. When you go and blend it in onto the skin, it really warms up with your skin and just gives it such a beautiful glowing look. This is definitely a little bit more glowy than the Buxom blushes. It will definitely give you that soft sheen, a really beautiful, like round cheek blush look. I think a formula like this works best when you when you press it into the skin. This is actually pretty pigmented. I would say that this is more of a medium pigmentation, so it was definitely more pigmented than I was expecting it to be. But I think that the color and the actual texture, the formula itself is very thin. I love that glow that it gives the skin, and I think this color is really unique as well. The color in combination with that soft golden shift to it, I think makes for a really, really beautiful blush. So if you are someone that loves blush, but you just aren't a fan of a cream blush, I think this one is a really nice option as well. Both of these are just really beautiful formulas for you to look into. And next, let's talk about a product that I feel like everyone talks about. I'm not even gonna stick here for too long because I don't want to bore you because I think everyone already knows about the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, but Guys, if there is going to be a powder bronzer that I apply onto my face, it's going to be this one. I don't think there's another one that compares to this. It has such a creamy, creamy formula to it, but it's still really buildable. It's never chunky or heavy looking on the skin. It has such an effortless, effortless blend. For me, it looks good every single time I wear it. It never looks choppy, muddy, heavy. The powder itself really has a silkiness that you can't really find at the drugstore. It reminds me of luxury makeup, the way that it performs, the way it looks on the skin. I don't know how Physicians Formula did it, but this is a cult favorite for a reason. For me, I've tried out so many powder bronzers and I just completely abandoned them because over and over and over I was disappointed by the formulas. They always looked really muddy on me, really choppy and just very apparent as a bronzer. But because this one is so blendable and buildable, the color I also think is really, really flattering if you have more fair skin. For all those reasons, this is my favorite and has been and I don't really look for another one because I know that this is always going to be the best. And lastly, is this a troll? So I had to include this product for a couple of reasons. One, I think it would be kind of funny. And two, I actually really do believe that this formula is one of the best powder formulas out there. And it is the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. Now I know what I just said, but we're not gonna focus on the cream. We're just gonna talk about the powder. The powder portion of this blush is just absolutely stunning. And the reason I always recommend this one is that you could apply the cream if you wanted to, but you could also just wear the powder on its own and it would look stunning. This is the shade Do We Know Her. This is my favorite shade. The formula itself is, is very creamy. It almost has like a sort of silicone slip to it, but I've mentioned before that it isn't an uncomfortable silicone feeling. Um, I do find that sometimes a more silicone based powder can look heavy on my skin. If you can believe that, it's supposed to be really smoothing, but on my skin, it can look really heavy on the skin and a little bit chunky. This one just blends beautifully. And I should mention with all these products, I don't need to set my face in order to use them. And that's something that's really important to me is that I don't have to set my entire face, bake, apply a bronzer, take off the bake. No, 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 no. I can have a dewy, dewy foundation on and these will all still blend like a dream. So that's very, very important to me. That's definitely the case with this as well. I think what makes this formula really pretty is that it's, this is just such a soft, 
beautiful peach color that just kind of washes over the cheeks in almost like a stain like fashion gives you that like perfect like cheeky little blush look i just love how flattering it looks on the skin it's so refined and luxurious and it just looks soft and flattering on the skin i actually do think that i see a sort of blurring effect with these as well and then you could take a little bit of the cream just a little bit you just take a little bit and put it on and you know what also something to mention is that i know that patrick ta has the standalone like monochrome it's monochromatic moment blushes and those are a different formula than this at least i looked at the ingredients and the formulations aren't exactly the same so i do think that this is special it really has a very buildable formula and i think that that is what makes it really flattering i think some people are still afraid of blush and getting the right placement and the right formula for them so getting something like this i think is a really fuss proof way to go especially because i think that this is the sheerest out of the three formulas that we're talking about well guys we made it but anyway i do hope that this video was super helpful for you guys so if it was please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe before you go because i would love to have you back and with all of that i will see you in my next one